The laundering of Donald Trump's image by Dana White is not only a disservice to the fans who pay to watch a pay-per-view $80 a pop, but it's also pretty disgusting for the athletes who compete to be on these shows for their entire lives. Now look, I don't want to besmirch the image of Dana White, who can be seen here beating his wife. But this technique is as old and as haggard and as beat up as Guilfoyle's face. Dana White, whose gym in Florida is unironically called The Plantation, I wish I was joking, builds his back on starving talent. And even when they're generational talents, champions like Iganu, he had to go box in top rank to make the same amount of money for his entire career in UFC in a single fight. This guy worked the sand mines in Cameroon when he was just a child. I mean, Sarah Huckabee Sanders licking her chops at the thought of that child labor, right? And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have someone just as desperate. This white boy right here, Kobe Covington. Last time I saw him fight, his jaw was disconnected from his face. You have this loser right here who's way past his prime. And it's not just me saying that, it's world famous wife beater. You might have heard about him. He beats his wife, Dana White. With Kobe and his performance tonight, obviously the time away from the cage probably was a factor, but do you think there was pressure on him, like, you know, involving Trump to the level he did, wanting the belt wrapped around by him? <laughs> so Kobe thought Trump was going to come put the belt title on shot. Him Do you think maybe the pressure got to him a little bit? Yeah, I think pressure gets to everybody. I'm sure Leon had a ton of pressure. I mean, he was just talking about what he said about his father, and, uh, you know, the last thing you want to do is now go out and lose to that guy. All these guys deal with pressure. But Colby's been in big fights before. This isn't Colby's easy. first rodeo. He's been in big fights. And uh, Colby just looks slow and old tonight, in my opinion. Slow and old. give his feedback on Colby's performance? No, I, th I, I mean, I, I think everybody felt the same way. I mean, he, he, he got Anytime out wrestled anyone loses by Trump. Leon tonight. I don't know I, that I don't guy. I don't know what you guys' opinion was, but mine was that he looked really slow. He had a hard time handling the speed. Um, could never really get off so because of the speed and even got out wrestled. So, um, you know, he, he didn't voice anything. He waited till Kobe spoke after the fight and wanted to hear his, uh, you know, his interview. But no, he didn't really have much to say. Kobe was saying that if he, if he had won, Trump would have, would have wrapped the bell around him. Is that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, 20 Do you think Secret yeah. Service can let him get up there in the middle of the octagon? And <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I do. I, Secret Service. Definitely not. He's I'm, sitting I'm there hanging doable. out with Kid Rock and everybody else on the side of the side of the ring. Secret Service, my ass. If he would have won, Trump would have been up there in a heartbeat wrapping that belt around. But now Colby is perceived as a loser. And that's what this episode's about. You take these very desperate fighters, clawing their way to the top. Just so Dana White gives them, you know, whatever he deems, he deems they should have. Every single pay-per-view now, they co-op Trump's image with this popular sporting event. They co-op UFC with Trump's far right. I don't think anyone can argue that at this point, even his supporters. His far right ideology. And what it ends up amounting to is a synthetic populism. Colby is just like Aganu. Dana White takes 90%, 95%, whatever it is, of the total income, even when he headlines the fight. But Colby being so starved, so pathetic, so, I guess, over the hill, there's definitely a skill gap now. You see it every time he fights someone who's an actual name. That he leans in to what's happening. He leans into what the boss is doing. And the pathetic suck-up he is, he deep-throats it. He bootlicks in the events leading up to the event, in the actual event, even after the event. Running over there to kiss Trump's ring after getting his ass kicked. Reminds me of this meme, right? Get in, loser. We're going losing. He didn't knock me out. He didn't fucking yeah, knock me yeah. out, dude. He never fucking knocked, knocked me out. Yeah, the ref had to fucking yeah. cheat. I beat yeah. his ass for oh, five rounds oh, straight. Not only is he co-opting the look, right? Colby, the the he's co-opting the... the, the... Right? Fucking idiot. Oh, they cheat to win. The UFC roster. Literally, you're so fucking God, stupid. On Saturday night, I'm gonna bring you to a place you never want to be. I'm gonna bring you the seventh layer of hair. Hell. Okay. Hair. No, I'm bringing you to seventh layer. Hell. You, we'll, we'll we'll say what's up to your dad while we're there. Oh. So yeah. So a couple things about that clip. Colby knows he's over the hill. Why would you dress up like this? If you knew you were gonna be the champion, if you didn't need this crutch, 
if you didn't need a character to be relevant. And I'm going to come back to this, because MAGA does work as a two-way street. Not just for Colby, not just for celebrities, but for your average chud out there. The second thing is, Leon's dad was murdered, so of course Colby brought that out. And while this may seem like a heel act, like from WWE, like he's just playing the part of a bad guy, the chuds absolutely ate this up. For a white guy in a MAGA hat, to be looking down on a black guy whose father was murdered and to get him so mad about that, this is what they love. This is the juice from the squeeze. Sounds especially and of course not you have the arbiter pace. of the chug. Why Joe was Logan. that? You know, I've had a long layoff, so I think a little ring rust had to do with it. But Excuses. I want to shout out all our first responders, our military. Those are the real heroes, the celebrities of our country. Also want to shout out Donald Trump. You can delay us, but you can't deny us. He's going to make America great again. We need these borders yeah. secure. We need inflation down. Anymore, and we need America dog. first again. Donald Trump's the Sorry. only one that's going to do that again. You're not co-opting his image. He's not going to get that ring with you. What happens for you now? This was your third shot at the title. How are you feeling right now? Oh, I feel great. I didn't feel like I got touched. It was an easy fight. You know, I don't have a scratch on me. So, you know, a little, I'd like to get back to work. Early he doesn't have a scratch on him. Hey, I don't have a scratch on me. Look at his fucking nose. Kobe may only be signaling to the chuds to try to exploit them. But he's got that chud delusion already. That MAGA chud delusion. I didn't lose the election. 60 Supreme Court rulings. I didn't get a scratch on me. His nose is bleeding in front of everybody. That is the definition of MAGA. And I'm here to tell you the fight wasn't even close. I think Leon won every round. I don't think Kobe even snuck one out. Last month over Thanksgiving, I got to get an earful about how overpaid NBA and NFL players are, right? With undertones of racism. There's no, there's no easier way to put it. But I didn't hear one mutter about how exploited these UFC fighters are. Like it or not, the NBA and NFL have strong player unions. And this allows the players to have control over their destiny, over their faith, where they want to play. Do they want to chase a ring? Do they want to cash out? And, you know, in the overall scheme of things, it does hurt the game a lot, especially when your team's the Utah Jazz. And the UFC, by definition, is the exact opposite of that. It's kind of like Vince McMahon, right? If any of these fighters want opportunities, want a bigger payday, they have to kiss Dana's ring. Famed wife beater, Dana White. They have to rush over to flatter Dana's guests, no matter how vile they may be. They have to kowtow to move up in this plantation, actual name of the gym, system. And to be honest, that's exactly how famed wife beater Dana White, how disgraced neo-Nazi whisper President Donald Trump, how his guest, Swanson boy, Tucker Carlson, that's exactly the way they want it. And I'm not talking about the UFC, I'm talking about this country. If you haven't watched a UFC pay-per-view recently, like these last couple, good for you. Stop giving money for Dana to run political ads for his buddy. But if you have seen them, they'll show the winner of a fight. And I've noticed this. And then they'll cut to Trump to meld those images together. And as you saw with Colby, they didn't do that because he lost. They showed like an upper aerial view. I'm talking, they bring the camera down in his face. When the fighter wins. This one, Trump's like, no, keep me off the camera. I don't want to be associated with a loser. And Colby's finding that out fast. I mean, earlier in the episode, we watched how, how fast Dana White threw him under the bus. Said he was old and tired. They literally stopped the event so Trump can have an entrance. I shit you not. This, this pay-per-view you paid $80 for. This is what they give you. They blast Kid Rock's music from like 1997 or whatever. It was pretty good back then. I listened to Kid Rock back then, but that was 20 years ago. It's a long time ago. They blast that in and he walks in with Tucker Carlson or Mario Lopez or whoever else is trying to co-opt this image that night. Donald Trump and Kid Rock, two relics from a bygone era, right? So you have to wonder who this is for. Obviously, they're trying to tap into the, you know, the teenage kids. Young, dumb, and full of cum, right? They want to get them because they don't, they don't think too much of that age. I know because I was one of them. But bringing in Kid Rock, Tucker Carlson, that's targeting 
I think that might be targeting my demographic. But it's the demographic of mine, that divorced dad energy, right? A couple times a month, I'll stumble onto Facebook. And I call it divorced dad energy, but it doesn't have to be a divorced dad. But you'll read these poorly grammar-ridden paragraphs, no spaces, no punctuation, sometimes all in caps, of these, of these bros I went to school with. And they'll go off about this new woke generation, trans, whatever. They have like two likes, <laughs> you know. After being up for a month, it'll have two likes. But they don't get it. They don't understand. So when they see Trump and they see Kid Rock and Tucker Carlson on their favorite sporting event, they're no longer the crazy person on Facebook who writes in all caps with terrible grammar, right? No, now they see themselves as part of the culture. And that's what this whole thing is about. And the biggest proof of this is when Dana White's not there with the theatrics, with the entrances, with this very controlled environment in the front row. I mean, take for example when Trump went to the college football game. Here he comes. No kid rock entrance music. You hear that right away. Boo. <laughs> I didn't add any of this sound. Much different, right? Than the entrance he receives in that very controlled environment. He stays in the car too, because you know they're booing the shit out of him. I don't know if he knows that little lights on. Anyway, the booze continue. Laura Ingram once said LeBron should just shut up and dribble. I mean, that obviously had racial undertones. But what she was talking about is political actions LeBron was doing off the court in his free time. But using that example, kind of see how on the nose, how batshit what Dana White is doing. Just picture, you know, LeBron's just won the NBA championship. But before the trophy comes out, before anything else, Adam Silver says, come over here, come over here. And LeBron goes over and hugs Joe Biden, hugs Obama, shakes their hand, points to them, makes that whole event of winning about those two people. That's the co-oping I'm talking about. That's the laundering that Dana White is doing for Donald Trump. And I'm not implying that a majority of UFC fighters are liberal. I'm not even implying over 50% of them are. They probably don't think about politics too much until they have to, until the boss makes them. And that's what makes this melding of politics and sport just so obvious to anyone not in this bubble. You think Colby Covington has a nuanced take to marginal tax rates? Yeah, sure. Let's hear about it. No. I'm not. He didn't even touch me. I'm not even bleeding. After Charlottesville, I knew I wanted to start making episodes of something, right? I didn't really have a good idea of a way in. I didn't picture this, just me sitting here talking. I didn't know people would like this better. So I decided to play a Trump character with the hat and everything. It was very hacky. It wasn't It wasn't nuanced at all. It was very on the nose of what I was doing, you know. Lorena! And because it was so over the top, a lot of it was in bad taste. But even going over the top in the way we did, when Trump supporters would see that red hat, they would just immediately follow and then be surprised that I wasn't an actual Trump supporter. It was that easy. I didn't have to do extensive research on subjects I talk about. I didn't have to share like real life experiences with anybody. All I had to do was put on that hat. And in many ways, I'm still in this hell algorithm YouTube put me in because I wore that damn hat, right? And this is what I'm talking about. It's a two-way street on MAGA. So I, I talked about how Trump's co-opting the winners, the athletes in UFC to try to improve his image. To put the image back in your head that Trump's a winner. Trump didn't lose by 7 million votes. He didn't try to overthrow the government. He hasn't been crying for four years. He's a winner. That's what he's trying to co-opt. Now with the chuds, like the guy who writes all caps paragraphs on Facebook, and the ones in these comments... What they try to do is they try to co-op MAGA. They try to co-op Trump's image. 
And so what you'll see is like the guy who writes paragraphs on Facebook in all caps. People who leave comments on my videos will always subplant themselves with someone else. They'll never say, oh, my video has, you know, 10,000 views. Yours has 2,000. No, they'll be like, your video only has 2,000 views. Joe Rogan has 4 million. Okay, yeah, good job, Chud. I'm not Joe Rogan. Been at this, what, like three years? I think uh, the new format, two years? And that's the two-way street that MAGA gives them. Of course, 98% of these people that come after this channel, they could never make a, a coherent video in their life, right? They wouldn't research anything. They don't have any real world experience. They probably got into politics in 2015. So they subplant themselves. They quantum leap themselves. Now they're Joe Rogan making fun of me. And it makes sense if you're an idiot, right? It makes sense if you're a dumbass. You busted me, chuds. I spent my 20s, most my 30s, helping left grassroots candidates run. I was outside doing it. Should I have filmed the whole thing? Yeah, apparently I should have. Shit. The entire reason I bring this up is if I wanted to, like Colby Covington, I could put the red hat back on and unironically talk about, I don't know, some pizzeria that the deep state runs. And I would, and I could cash out on this channel. I could even start moving some merch. I mean, I do have this Chad the Chud t-shirt, but people on the left don't really, I, they don't like to connect their personality to entire political movements. Or even to a show. Which is good. But if you do want the shirt, it is there. And I'm telling you, that's all it takes. If I had the red hat on, I wouldn't have to research for any of these shows. I wouldn't have to share anecdotes about my own personal experiences. You know, running campaigns, helping candidates, political movements. I wouldn't need any of that. I could spend an hour dissecting like a 4chan post. And that is what these UFC fighters have to do. Even if they don't give a shit about politics. Even if they're not from this country. Because on the plantation, literally named the plantation in Florida, there's only one way to move up. And that's licking boots. If you do like content like this, you don't have to buy a t-shirt. But I think it does help the channel if you like and subscribe. I think it helps it if you like it because then... You know, the chuds are always like, oh, I'm downvoted this video. Take that. That's good. I'm trying to get out of your algorithm. So if you like this video, if you watch other videos like this, if you find me charming on pretty much every level, make sure you like it. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment because we have a great community here. I, 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 I love that most of my followers comment on everything. Whether it's adding color to the lines of something I missed. Or straight up calling me on my shit. That's what I want this for. That's what I love. So. Have a Merry Christmas. I might make a video again before then. Who knows? The Chud Report.